number four, onboarding is not a one size fits all. Onboarding is a process that needs to be customised based on the experiences of our new hires. The experiences of a graduate are going to be very different to a experienced senior manager. You know, every new hire that joins the organisation has a different um, background, has different work experiences, and so we need to tweak and customise the programme to suit. We know, for example, that people who have prior work experience tend to work things out faster. They can get connected a lot sooner because they have the strategies in place to know how to suss things out. Yeah. What are some of the things that we can do, because typically these people have experience, they've, they've come with lessons learned, they've come from prior organisations where they've been on board they know the lay of the land a wee bit more. You know, what are some of the things that we can do to help speed up the process when it comes to onboarding executive staff. When we're dealing with executive staff, there's no reason why we can't fast track the activity around things like strategy and planning. So um, what I'd be suggesting here is there's no reason we can't get them connected with the board, meeting the board, reading board papers, um, doing board presentations. Somebody at the um, session on Monday, or sorry, Friday, said that they had even as part of the selection executives doing a presentation to the board. A lot of organisations onboarding executives um, acknowledge the importance of helping those people get some quick wins under their belt. Everybody wants to work for a manager who achieves results. So it's in our best interest to help those people get some quick wins under their belt from day one. Uh, you know, that's going to instill confidence, trust, credibility and help the momentum going. Barry, you talked about jump-starting the relationship builder. You know, so there's no reason you can't meet an executive several times ahead of them formally coming on board. Get them connected with stakeholders, key suppliers. All of those things are really important so that come day one, they well and truly hit the ground running. Not all prior experience is good experience. Sometimes people with prior experience, their perception of things can be very narrow. So if you're onboarding someone who has a very narrow set of background experiences, the risk is that they're going to come on board and it's very much, oh, this is how I've always done it. This is how we did it in my last organisation. And so they have the blinkers on. Equally, people at the other end of the scale who have lots of experience can come with what we call false confidence. Yeah, I've done it before. Yeah, I don't need any training. I know what to do. All right, so not all experience is good experience, and we need to keep an eye out for those um, hooks. You know, people who are either too narrow in their focus or the ones who, who well and truly think they know it all. Gen Ys are also a really interesting group in which to work with. So for them, the carrot of having a job for life is no longer the ideal. You know, that's not of interest to this group. This group want to do meaningful work, they want to be challenged, they want to be connected to something that's bigger than themselves. And what I see happening more and more often is that this group are looking to us to help kickstart their careers. What are you going to do for me? You know, what are you going to do for me in the first 12 months of my career to help me on my, on my way? And organisations are going to be left behind if we can't give them a robust onboarding experience that gives them the challenge, that gives them the stimulating work that they want, that gives them the feedback and helps, as I said, move them forward. Anybody have experience onboarding Gen Y employees? Would that be 
yeah. characteristic of what you I think it's seen. actually counterproductive to talk about long-term employment because mm. they don't see that. You know, they all yeah. want to work for themselves. Mm. They don't see it as a good thing to go and work for a big corporate or a Fortune 500. They look at those people, I think, as fat cats who corrupt the environment and all that sort of thing. So it's kind of very different from what it was when I started the workforce. Yeah. It's all about the value you can add to them mm. Mm. and they expect it from the start and they yeah. don't want to earn it. Mm. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they are they are an interesting group in that I think they on the one hand want flexibility in their job, they don't want to be too closely managed, but they actually do want leadership and direction and structure. So on one hand you don't make me um, into something I'm not, don't cl make things too claustrophobic for me, but still give me direction, still give me guidance. And I think onboarding is a very powerful way in which we can actually meet those competing demands. And uh, as I said, if we don't have something for them, they will walk with their feet. You know, they're not a group that's uh, uh, going to sit, sit around and wait for things, or sit around and um, you know expect things to uh, to fall into their laps. They will make it happen for themselves. The final rule is onboarding is a process. It is not a single event. So I think in the course of this afternoon, you may well have got a sense that you know this isn't something that we're going to wrap up in an afternoon. You know this is something that is going to take time if it's done well. Therein, I think, lies the challenge for us. On one hand, we do want to bring people up to speed quickly, but we're not going to get any sort of traction if we just dump things on people. There are things we can do to speed up the process, and I've already talked about a few of these already. First off, we can front load the program as much as we can as much as possible. So, you know, we can get all of that administration stuff, the HR policies, the background corporate history, we can get all of that out the way and, you know, as much e-learning as we can, we can get that underway prior to them moving on board. We can also ensure that all mentoring support and learning is consistent. And this is again where technology plays a huge role. We can get everybody singing from the same song sheet, we can get all of the messages consistent, there's going to be less confusion, people can do real work from day one. As soon as there's confusion, as soon as the manager, the peers, HR, as soon as people start feeding different messages through to the new hire, confusion sets in. Smart organisations have milestones such as 30, 60, 90 days where they check in with the new hire see how things are going, you know, what's working well, what's not working, what do we need to tweak, what do we need to manage. Yeah? It's a very good way to also make sure that if things aren't working, reasonably early on we can put the corrective processes in place. Smart organisations that I've read about um, also often use projects in that first month for the new hire, so identify projects that the new hire can take responsibility for. You know, what is it that this person can have ownership of in that first month to get them connected into our organisation quickly, get them talking to different parts of the organisation, and again, kick-starting that whole learning process. Now, I talked about the importance of one or two early wins for executive staff, there's no reason we can't have that for all staff coming on board. The importance of giving people, um, uh, the importance of quick wins can't be um, overestimated. You know, it's really important that people have credibility, they build confidence, they establish momentum. We can do that by finding one or two areas they can have success. It doesn't need to be big wins but it gives them success, gets momentum going. Any comments on that? Those sort of things make sense? The quick wins is really good. Mm -hmm. Really great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
there's a more practical reason why onboarding is a process rather than a one-off event. Uh, particularly if we look at the time frame in which an employee <coughs> decides to stay. Research done by the Aberdeen Group um, back in 2006, they found that 90% of employees will decide to stay in your organisation within the, the first six months. If we want to maximise our chances of holding people beyond six months, it makes sense that we have an onboarding programme that is at least as long as that. Yeah? If we want to hold people beyond six months, it doesn't make sense to me that we have an onboarding programme that lasts one day. Okay. I asked you this question at the beginning of the session. How well does your onboarding programme assist the learning and the adjustment of your new hires? Based on what you've heard today and what I've shared with you, is, is, is anybody brave enough to sort of um, admit that there's things that they could uh, could do better in their own programs? Yeah. 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 <laughs> is anybody at least you know people on the right track at least? Yeah. Yeah. A few things there that resonated with people in terms of um, practical things they could take away. Well, that's a, a nice segue then to the question that I wanted to um, actually leave you all with. The question I think um, is worth just closing on now is, is to actually reflect on what are the three to five things that based on today's presentation, you can actually take away and apply immediately back into your you know, work, workplace. Mm -hmm.